Okay, thank you. So I'm Fadi Haddad from the Leukemia Department at MD Anderson. And for, uh, for the past few years, uh, and since the introduction of tyrosine kinase inhibitors, we shifted from chemotherapy alone to chemotherapy in combination with tyrosine kinase inhibitors as a standard of care for patients with pH positive ALL. Initially, we started combining different, uh, our group and other groups started combining different types of chemotherapy regimen with first generation imatinib. And we had a long-term overall survival of around 40, 40%. And patients mostly would benefit from consolidation uh, stem cell transplant, allogeneic stem cell transplantation to be able to maintain a long-term remission. So the standard of care was what therefore shifted from standard chemo to chemo plus tyrosine kinase inhibitors followed by stem cell transplantation. A few years after, we started having newer generation tyrosine kinase inhibitors, in particular dasatinib. And with this, we combined in our institution dasatinib with intensive chemotherapy hyperceivad. And with this, we were able to, uh, to reach longer of uh, overall survival on the long run was, uh, was around 60 to 65 percent of patients surviving on the long run. And then we started seeing more patients that, that were relapsing. We start seeing more emergence of T315I mutation. And then we sought to investigate newer, newer strategies for those patients, in particular with the introduction of ponatinib which is a third uh, generation tyrosine kinase inhibitor, more potent compared to the first and second generation TKIs. And it has a clinical activity against the T315I mutation. And this is a major benefit for, uh, for patients with pH positive ALL uh, because ponatinib has the potency to inhibit the occurrence of this mutation. Plus number two, it has the ability to induce deeper molecular responses and we have seen that the, in, the induction of deeper molecular responses is associated with longer survival. And in fact, when we combined at our institution ponatinib with hyperceivad, we were able to achieve deep molecular remissions at a level of 86% among patients overall. And this translated into really, really good outcomes with a five-year overall survival of 74%. Of note, by this strategy, we were able to decrease the number of patients that require stem cell transplant. And in this phase two study in particular with hyperceivad and ponatinib, we had about only 20% of the patients who, who proceeded to allogenic stem cell transplantation and the remaining 80% just received chemotherapy plus ponatinib. And with this strategy, we had really very good outcomes and even patients who did not have a stem cell transplant did achieve even better outcomes compared to patients who, who received stem cell transplantation. And from here, we kind of had a new paradigm shift in the treatment of pH positive ALL, where the introduction of more potent and newer tyrosine kinase inhibitor, in particular ponatinib, induced deeper molecular responses and prevented the emergence of T315I uh, mutation, which is the main driver of relapse in those patients, in like 75% of the patients, which is really a, a, a significant percentage. And therefore, this was the, the standard of care that we were adopting at MD Anderson for the past few years. Until more recently, when we started using more of a chemotherapy-free approach. And by this, I mean the incorporation of blenatumumab and ponatinib. And this is what we're presenting uh, this year now at SOHO. So blenatumumab is a bispecific uh, T-cell engager. It means it binds the T-cell and the B cell from, uh, that is the leukemia B cell together. And this way we can engage more this cytotoxic T cell activity. And uh, in patients with relapsed refractory pH positive ALL, blenatumumab, a single agent, was shown to be effective. As well in the frontline setting, other groups have shown that the combination of blenatumumab and dasatinib, the second generation TKI in the D-ALBA trial, resulted in also very good outcomes on the long term with a four-year survival of 78%. On this study, half of the patients underwent stem cell transplant. And therefore, we saw that since blenatumumab is very effective and ponatinib is very potent compared to prior generation TKIs, let's combine both, bo uh, both agents in patients with pH positive ALL. 
And this is what we did in our phase two study. We included patients with newly diagnosed disease and relapsed refractory disease, and also we included patients with CML and lymphoid blastic phase. Uh, in the study, we excluded patients who had cardiovascular disease because we're using ponatinib, which is known to have cardiovascular adverse events, but we allowed patients who had CNS leukemia. And uh, let's talk a bit about the regimen that we're doing. So each patient during induction is receiving ponatinib at a dose of 30 milligrams in combination with blenatumumab at a standard dosing, which is four weeks on, two weeks off. And after induction, Patients were uh, given up to four cycles of consolidation therapy with the same combination, followed by maintenance single agent ponatinib for at least five years. And each patient who achieved CMR, it means like undetectable disease by PCR, uh, it was, uh, the dose of ponatinib was lowered from 30 to 15 milligrams in order to mitigate the risk of adverse events. And we had very good responses. In particular, in the frontline setting, we had an overall response rate of 96% a very high CMR rate, complete molecular response among patients who responded to therapy in the order of 87%. Even outcomes were also good in the ref relapsed refractory cohort. We had 14 patients in the relapsed refractory cohort. Uh, also the response rate was 92%, the CMR rate was 79% overall, which is really very encouraging results. And those results also translated to an improved overall survival and event-free survival. And in the frontline setting, for example, among 40 patients, we had only one patient who died in CR and one patient who died early because of intracranial hemorrhage. So two events unrelated to study drug, no leukemia relapses observed seen after a median follow-up, relatively short of 15 months, but as of now, we didn't see any leukemia relapses. And which, which is important in this study is only one patient received a transplant compared to 50% with the blinatumumab and nasatinib, which is really good uh, and really encouraging and promising results for our patients in the frontline setting to offer them a treatment that is chemotherapy free and can spare them the toxicities of stem cell transplantation. And therefore, this is a paradigm shift in the management of pH positive ALL, and this translated into a two year event free survival and overall survival of 95% each. Even in patients in the relapse setting, uh, the overall survival at two years was 62%. Of note, patients with CML and lymphoid blastic phase did not do as well as patients with pH positive ALL. The overall complete molecular response rate was 33%, which is like one third of the patients, and the survival at two years were, are, was around 40%. And therefore, we believe that this particular subset of patients might benefit more from the addition of chemotherapy, and that's a strategy that we are investigating at, at MD Anderson not doing only blinatumumab and ponatinib, but also adding on top of this regimen some low intensity chemotherapy, in particular mini hyper CVD. And we believe that this strategy hopefully will increase the rate of complicular, uh, mole complete molecular response and improve the survival in this particular subset of patients. So what are the take home messages? If you wanna advise uh, clinicians who treat patients with this type of disease, of course, when, when available, uh, this chemotherapy-free approach is effective, is safe to patients. It's still in the setting of clinical trial, as I said, only at MD Anderson we're doing this combination. But the early data are very encouraging, in particular in the frontline setting, 95% of survival after two years of follow-up now. Uh, if those results are confirmed on the long term, with longer follow-up, I think this could be a new standard, standard of care for patients with pH positive ALL that can spare patients the toxicities of standard chemotherapy and spare patients uh, the need to undergo stem cell transplantation, which carries also a significant risk of morbidity and mortality.